Don't forget to cut your thumb open as well. That always really helps. Boys, I've told you before, take care of your tip. Now to remove the headlight panel, we can get to the... Oh. In the last video, I showed you how to do the Mark II Focus Heater Panel Upgrade. And you've got to admit, it looks pretty awesome. It's so much better than the standard Fiesta one. And it looks even better at nighttime. And that's because as well as making that Focus Heater Panel, we also did an LED conversion. I gave you a complete DIY tutorial on how to make this because I know it can be quite tricky, especially getting all the knobs to actually line up in the right places. But I managed to do that and I've showed you exactly how so that you can do this if you wanted to have a go yourself. And I'm really happy to have seen some comments and messages from people saying that they're going to take this on and have a go at making it themselves. Some people even sent me photos of them in the process of doing it after watching my video. And there was even one guy who asked me if I could make him one. But sadly, I just don't have the time to do that. But if you don't feel like you can take it on yourself, then I'll leave a link in the description to Roger Andrews' Facebook page. He helped me out with mine and he also makes these and sells them for people and he can do full LED conversions. So go check him out and he will hook you up. And speaking of the full LED conversions, that's what we're gonna be working towards today. I'm not gonna get it all done in this video, but we're definitely gonna do some more of the bulbs inside the car and changing them to LEDs. So we're gonna be converting these heated screen buttons. We're gonna be doing the window switches. I'm gonna be doing the light switch panel here and I'm also gonna show you how to illuminate your boot pop button as well. Now you've seen that I went for a white theme with the heater panel, but these top ones, because my digital clock here lights up red, I'm gonna do these two in red, and obviously that's red anyway, so I think that'll look really good with red across the top there. Eventually, I will get onto doing the radio. I'm not gonna do that in this video because I'm still waiting for the bulbs to do this LCD screen here. And then I'm not too sure what color I'm gonna do these just yet. I'm thinking probably white. Same with the light switch panel, but I'm not entirely sure if maybe I can just light up this little bit like the indication, you know, the direction thing in red, maybe, I'm not sure. And the boot pop button, I definitely think that I want to do that in red. But it will depend on what LEDs I've actually got because I can't remember exactly what LEDs I ordered in what colour. I think I've got enough to do them, whatever, red or white, but we'll see. And then obviously I will get onto the speedo eventually, but I'm going to be doing something pretty cool with that rather than just changing the LEDs or changing the bulbs to LED. So that will be in a future video because that one should be quite a long one as well. So I'm not going to try and add that into this video. But for now, I need to remove these buttons, the window switches, light switch panel, boot pop button, and all that sort of stuff. So to remove these switches, I'm just going to pop the radio out and then push these out from the back just because I don't want to try and pry behind here and risk damaging the outside of this piece. Okay, so to remove the headlight panel, we can just open this little tray here, reach in behind, there's an electrical connector with a little tab to release. And then there's two little pieces to grip and squeeze together. And then that just pops out. So you basically just squeeze those two from behind. That's where the electrical connector plugs in. That's the connector right there, with the little tab on the top. And then we can also reach in here and just press out the boot pop button. And again, little electrical connector, with a little tab to press in, and then that pops out. And then you can also remove this little shroud as well. Now to remove the window switches, we should just be able to pop off this piece of trim around the bottom here. Be careful, there's actually two seams under here. You want to go make sure you're only getting behind the first one to pop this cover off. Otherwise, you go too far behind it. I'll show you what I mean once it's off. So... You see, I've just popped that thin piece off, but I can also get in behind there. You can see whether you don't want to go behind that bit, you only want to go behind this first panel. And then there's just an electrical connector with a little tab on the back of there. A couple of little metal tabs on the back of the switch. And then that just pops out. And then it's just the same story on the other side. Oh, don't forget to cut your thumb open as well. That always really helps. Done. Okay, so I've got all the switches laid out on the bench. I've got everything that I'm gonna need to do the conversion. And I've also got all the LEDs that we need for the switches. We've got a couple of different types of LED here. These little square ones are PLCC3528. They go in the heated screen switches. 
These ones are just some round top through hole LEDs. And then these are pretty much the same. These are just flat tops. The round tops will be going in the headlight control panel. The flat tops go in the window switches. And for the boot pop button, I will show you this later on, but you actually need a round top that's kind of pre-wired. You can buy pre-wired ones of these because we actually have to run a separate wired LED for this because there's nothing to actually replace in it originally. That doesn't come illuminated on any Fiesta as far as I know. Just a couple of things if you're not familiar with all the different types of LED. So this little square one, this is a surface mount LED. So it has two metal pads on the back and then they solder directly to the front of a PCB and that's how they get their power. These ones are through hole LEDs. So these two little legs on the back poke through holes in the PCB. You then solder them to the tracks on the back of the board and then you just snip the legs off. But all these LEDs, regardless of which ones they are, they all have a polarity. LEDs have to be the right way round. You have to get plus and minus the correct way. So you'll wanna check which way round the LEDs are inside here before you remove them from the little PCB that's behind these buttons. And you also wanna check which way round your new LEDs are before you solder them in. With these little surface mount LEDs, the way to check which side is positive and which side is negative, basically there's a little notch just in this bottom right hand corner. That notch means that this side of the LED is negative and then this side is positive. I've made up this little tester just so I can show you basically. It's just a battery holder for a 2032 battery with a positive and a negative wire soldered on to the pins. So I'm just gonna pop the battery in the holder and then show you the polarity of the LED. So I'm just gonna pop this battery into the holder and then hopefully you can see this little notch that's on the right hand side that I showed you earlier. So that is the negative side. So I've got my black negative wire on that side, the red positive on the other, and I can just get to the pads from the side. And as you can see, as I touch those on there, that LED lights up. If I swap these over and touch the red positive wire to the negative side of the LED, and then the black negative to the positive side, as you can see, nothing happens that doesn't light up so you need to make sure that when you solder these in you get them the right way around so that you get all your leds working with the through hole leds the way to tell which side is positive and which side is negative is the leg length so the shorter leg is the negative side and the longer leg is the positive side but what about the through hole leds that are already inside here because they're going to have had the legs cut and they're probably going to be the same length and you're not going to be able to tell which is positive and which is negative like you can with these ones well there is another way to tell so if you can just see how i've poked this led through this little piece of card then i'm hoping it comes across on camera but you see where the shorter negative leg is so on that side of the LED, you can see it's kind of cut off flat against that card. Can you see the edge of that? Whereas on this side, it's curved all the way round. So hopefully that comes across on camera. You've got flat on the negative side and rounded the rest of the way round, especially on the positive side. So that is another way of telling if you don't have the legs. And then just to show you with our tester, we've got negative on the short leg and positive on the longer leg. And then just to show you what I'm gonna be using to do this, I've just got a cheap soldering iron off eBay. Normally for surface mount components like these, you'd use a hot air jet, but I don't have one at home. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it with a soldering iron. Then I've got a few other little bits here that aren't necessary, but this is flux. Hopefully you've seen me use this before, but if you haven't, it's just like a clear liquid that you apply to the solder joints. And then once you heat up that solder, this just helps it melt and flow a lot better, especially if the factory solder that's in there is lead free. This is leaded solder, but a lot of manufacturers, especially nowadays, everything has to be lead free because of you know breathing in lead fumes and stuff like that. But that is leaded. I'm not sure what's in here. If it is unleaded solder, then that will definitely help it flow a lot better. But like I said, it isn't essential. It'll just take a little bit longer to heat up. Then this is solder wick, which is basically just a copper braid. So once you've removed your old surface mount components, you can clean up the pads that they sit on with this. You just hold this over the pad, heat it up with the soldering iron, and then what it'll do is, you can see that's nice and clean, but what it'll do is it'll draw the solder up into the braid and remove it from the pads. Then obviously I've just got a pair of tweezers for lifting up the components, a few different screwdrivers just for opening up the casings on some of these. And then you could use one of these for removing some of the through hole components. So basically you'd heat up the solder on the back where the legs are soldered in, heat it up with the soldering iron, and then you hold this there, it's spring loaded and it would kind of suck 
the solder out as you press the button, but I found that for certain applications these work, but for this, it's probably not gonna to work too well, so I'm not gonna use this in this instance. So to open up the heated screen switches, there's just four tabs, which I'm removing with some thin screwdrivers, and then the two pieces just pull apart. You can set the front piece with the buttons off to the side, then remove the rubber pads, and then you have access to the LEDs on the PCB. Before I remove any of them, I'm checking the polarity with my little tester, and then I'm marking the negative side of each LED on the board so that I know which way around they go, once I've removed all the LEDs. To remove them, I'm applying flux to the pads and then I'm heating up the pad on one side and lifting it off the board with the tweezers. With the one side lifted, I can switch around, heat up the other side and then the LED should come away. Then just to show you again, heat up the pad on one side, lift that side of the LED, then switch over, heat up the pad on the other side, and the LED comes away. It's easier to solder new components to clean pads, so I'm applying a little bit of the flux and then using the solder wick to remove any leftover solder from the pads where we've just removed those LEDs. You can just see here the clean pads versus the ones that have still got the solder left over. To solder on the new LED, I'm applying some flux to the pads and then applying some solder to the tip of my iron. Then I'm holding the LED in place and tacking down one side. Once I'm happy the LED is not going to move, I can then apply flux to the pad on the other side, apply some more solder to the tip of my iron and then tack in the other side. Once the LED is held in place, I like to apply a little bit more flux to the pads and then just touch the soldering iron on either side of the LED. It just makes the joint look a bit more uniform. You don't have to do this, but it just looks neater in my opinion. So now I've shown you one, let's quickly do the other side. And then just to show you on these bottom LEDs, you can do this without the flux and without the solder braid. If you are struggling to get the LEDs off, adding a little bit of solder to your iron before you touch it on those pads can help soften it up and get that solder flowing a little bit better so you can remove the LEDs a little bit easier. You probably won't be able to tidy up the pads without the copper braid, but not to worry, it just means your LEDs might sit off the board a little bit compared to how they would sit on nice clean pads like the LEDs that we did at the start. Now all the new LEDs are soldered on, it's worth just checking that they're all working and then the switch can be reassembled. Now most of you will probably ignore this bit, but to prolong the life of your soldering iron tip, then I highly recommend that you clean the tip once you're done and then apply a little bit of solder to the end of it just to protect the tip and stop it oxidizing and then turn it off at the plug. Boys, I've told you before, take care of your tip. So next up is the headlight control panel. And again, there's four tabs holding this together, two on the top and two on the bottom. Once you've released those, you can pull the two halves apart. Just be careful with the stalk that sits behind the dial. That exposes the PCB, which you can pop off with a screwdriver. Now I recommend you remove this little black piece just because last time I did this, it fell off and it took me forever to find it. So there's eight round top LEDs in this panel and I'm marking the negative side of each bulb by looking at the flat spots that I mentioned earlier. That way I know which way the new ones need to go in when I fit them. But for reference, if you wanna just screenshot this image, then feel free. Now there's a lot going on on the back of this board. And like I said earlier, I decided against using a solder sucker to remove the solder from all the LEDs. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm literally just heating up both pins of each LED from the top. And then I'm reaching my hand underneath and gripping the bulb just with my fingers and then pulling the bulb out once that solder softened. Can take a little bit of wiggling and sometimes you might have to bend the legs slightly with the soldering iron, but eventually they do come out pretty easily. There were a couple of times where I actually snapped the LED off and left the legs in the board, but not a problem. Just reach under with a pair of tweezers probably because it'll get hot. Soften the solder on the top and then just pull the remaining bit of the leg out from the bottom. Then using the marks that I made on the board earlier, I can pop through the new LEDs the right way round and then solder them in place. Now you could do these one at a time and just solder in each one as you go, or you could just put all the LEDs through first and then just solder them all in one go. Just make sure you're pulling the LEDs up tight to the board if you're doing them all together because you don't want them sticking out off the board so you want to make sure they're pulled nice and tightly to it before you solder them in. Then you can trim off all the excess from all of the legs, reassemble the panel and you're done. Moving on to the window switches and as well as replacing the bulbs, there's actually a little bit of painting I need to do on here as well. I'll explain in a minute, but first I just need to pop these covers off the top of the switches and then remove these little rockers from inside them. We're going to be painting the centers of the underside of these switch covers and that's because as they get older and they start to wear, you can actually see the light from the LEDs through the black plastic. So I'm just masking up where the arrows are so we don't get any paint there because we want light to shine through there. And then I'm just giving it a couple of light sprays with some black paint in the centers 
You don't have to go too crazy with this. It's just to stop some of that light bleeding through. So while those are drying, let's move on to the LEDs. Now there's three little pins in here that you wanna just slide out and then set those off to one side so you don't lose them. And then this housing comes apart the same way as everything else has. There's just a couple of tabs on either side, a couple of thin screwdrivers, and that should pop out no problem. The LEDs under here are sitting on this little plastic stand and then they're soldered through the PCB. I wanna remove the little plastic stand, so I'm just bending the LEDs off to the side and then the plastic piece just pulls away from the board. The new LEDs I've got are a tiny little bit bigger, so I'm just filing down the little parts of the stand where the LEDs sit, just by a couple of mil, just to make sure I've got enough clearance, because otherwise the bulbs might foul on the underside of the switches. Just before I remove the LEDs, I want to check their polarity, so I'm just using a little battery tester, and it's negative on the left, positive on the right, and it's the same on the other side. The easiest way to remove these LEDs is just to cut the tops off so you're left with two individual legs and then just heat the legs up one at a time and then pull them out through the board. Now we can't fit the new LEDs in the holes left behind because we've left solder in there. So this needs to be removed. So I'm just using the soldering iron to heat it up and then a solder sucker to remove it. And then our new LED fits in no problem. So then I'm just quickly going to remove the solder from the other side. And with that done, I can work on fitting the new LEDs. So fitting the new LEDs is fairly simple. All I'm doing is trying to bend the new LEDs to the shape of this little plastic stand they sit on. You don't have to be massively accurate here, but you do want to make sure the LED is sat right down on top of the stand so that we don't have any clearance issues like I mentioned earlier. So I'm just doing this by eye, bending them to shape, and then just measuring up, checking it against the PCB. And then once I'm happy, I'm just going to trim them down to length and fit them into the board. You may find it a little bit tricky to solder these in place, but you should be able to just get your soldering iron in between the PCB and the plastic housing on the plug. Once you've soldered the new LEDs in, then the covers should be dry and then you can reassemble the switch. Just make sure you don't forget those little metal tabs. Now onto the passenger switch. Again, there's two little tabs inside that you need to remove and set off to the side. I've already removed the cover on this one because I painted it when I did the driver's ones. Again, using a couple of thin screwdrivers, separate the casing, revealing the LED. Now this LED is mounted slightly differently. One leg is attached to a resistor and the other leg is just attached to a metal pin on the casing. After a quick polarity check, as expected, the positive side of the LED is connected to the resistor and the negative side is connected to that metal pin. So all we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna snip the legs of the LED either side so it can be removed. Then I'm gonna file down the little standoff that it sits on once again so we don't have any clearance issues. And then after bending the legs of the new LED into place, I'm just tacking these to where the original legs from the original LED were mounted to the resistor and that metal pin. I've left a little bit of those original legs just so I've got something to solder onto because I know for a fact those bits are gonna be copper which will get the best connection. With the LED installed, I can do one final check to make sure it's all working and then the switch can go back together and we're done with the window switches. Now there's just one more thing left to do and that's the boot pop button. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna be doing in this video is illuminating the boot pop button. Now these don't come illuminated from the factory. As far as I know, you couldn't get any Mark VI Fiestas with a boot pop button that lights up, even though it's kind of designed so that light will shine through it. Strange, I know, but I'm gonna show you how to light it up using a pre-wired round top LED. So the same as everything else we've done, basically, the casing of it just comes apart with a couple of little tabs, a couple of thin screwdrivers, and you're away. I'll show you what you need to cut, where you need to run the wires, and then I'll show you how to wire it in later on when it's fitted back in the car. So there really isn't too much to show you here. You just cut out one of the corners from the PCB. So this right-hand corner, on the side opposite the two pins then you just need to cut out the same section on the plastic housing i used a drill just to make a little channel in that side of the housing so that the wires have somewhere to run next you just need to take out the same corner on the plastic shroud that the actual button sits in to again make space for the wires and then it's just a case of reassembling it all with the wires in place you could glue them in place if you really want to but i found they just sit in there nicely once everything's reassembled and it gives you the option to reposition stuff if you haven't quite got the led sitting in the right place once you've tested it so there we go that is the led swap done on all of these switches and now we're ready to go and throw this all back in the car. So I'm gonna start with the easy stuff. First driver's window switches can go back into this piece of trim, plug in the electrical connector, and then pop this piece of trim back into place. And then the same on the passenger side. 
Next, the heated screen switches can go back in. So I'm just gonna plug in the electrical connector and then click the switches back into place. And then the radio just clicks back into place. Right, okay, so next we wanna wire in our now illuminated boot pop button. So we've got a positive and a negative. And what we wanna use off here is we wanna use this green and orange wire as our positive. And then we wanna connect obviously the negative to the negative, which is this black wire here. So I'm just gonna splice into those. I'm just gonna nick the insulation in a couple of places, strip a little bit back, strip a little bit extra off these, wrap the wires around, solder them in place. Got my soldering iron warming up down there. Solder them in place, little bit of electrical tape around there. And then hopefully we should have a working boot pop button. Now I know this isn't really the proper way to do this, but the reason I'm doing it is because I don't have the right type of crimp to cut the wires through completely, strip both sides back, and then use a crimp to splice those wires back together and then the additional wires for the boot pop button in as well. That way I'd be able to use proper heat shrink on the joints as well, but like I said, I haven't got the proper crimps for that. And there is another way I could have done it. I could just cut the wires, strip both sides back, kind of pull them together and twist them together again. That way I would be able to get heat shrink over there, but it would still require soldering. And it means that those two wires that you spliced into end up being shorter than the rest and it just makes the loom untidy. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But just in case you weren't convinced, I hate using electrical tape, but it is the worst, but not to worry. Right, so before we click the boot pop button back into place, we just need to run the proper wiring connector to actually make it work again. There we go. Set that off. At least we know it's working. Then we can push that back into where it goes. And then the lighting panel is obviously nice and easy. Just plug in the electrical connector and then that slots back into place. And it really is that easy. But unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait until later on tonight to show you because it's way too light at the minute and nothing will actually light up and I can't actually show you how good it's actually looking. So I'm gonna catch up with this a little bit later in the evening when it's a bit darker and then show you the finished result. Okay, so this is how it's looking. And now that we've got a little bit less light outside, we've got the red row all the way across the top, which is looking really good. And it's gonna look even better once I've done the radio, which should match in with the heater control panel down here. We've got the headlight switches over here, again, looking really good. I've got white all the way around, and then I have managed to get just this little directional indication lit up red compared to the white with everything else because I want it to look a little bit like how the speedo is going to look when I've done that with red needles and then white all the way around the outside. So I've done this by just doing the one LED of the three in the center in red and the other two in white. That's why this lights up white down here and this is red up here. Unfortunately, if I put the headlights on, it does fade a little bit as this piece gets closer to the white bulbs at the bottom, but at least when we're on side lights, that looks really good anyway. Then we've got the boot pop button again, looking really good. Now that's illuminated. It looks so much nicer than just, you know, without any sort of LED behind it. And then we've got the window switches, which again are looking really good. And as you can see, there's no light bleeding through like there was before. Unfortunately, I might need to just go over this one again. There is a tiny little patch there where you can see some of the light coming through, but that's not a problem. I can easily touch that up. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how this is all coming together. And I think it's gonna look even better, like I said, when I've done the speedo and the radio as well, then it's gonna look awesome and it's all just gonna tie in really nicely. And there we go, that's this part of the LED conversion at least done. I'm sorry this has been a bit of a longer video and that 90% of it has been voiceovers, but I think if I'd have tried to explain it while actually doing it, it had taken even longer. But nevertheless, let me know what you think of the conversion in the comments and let me know if you're gonna have a go at it yourself. I will get on to doing the LED conversion for the clocks and the radio in some future videos, but for next week's video, I'm gonna try and mix it up a bit just to keep the content varied and try and keep it interesting. But for this video, it's time to end, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.